Been a busy few weeks for Apple since the release of iOS 16 with the additional release of the iPhone 14 lineup. Now that we've had a few weeks to integrate iOS 16 in our lives, I want to point out five of the features in iOS 16 that I can't live without and hopefully you learn how to use today and you can't live without soon as well. I'm Jason Cipriani. Thanks for watching this ZDNet video. All right, so iOS 16, I've actually been using it since June when Apple released it through the developer program as a beta, but it wasn't until the final release, the public release, that I was really able to start using some of the features because they rely on other people in some instances. So here are five of my favorite features in iOS 16. All right, let's start with the first feature that I simply can't live without, and it's something you need to turn on right now. For as long as I can remember, Android phones have had a slight vibration as you type on the keyboard, letting you know that the key press has been registered. It mimics what we feel when we type on physical keyboards, and it's something that I've grown accustomed to when typing on Android devices. The iPhone, until now, has not had this feature. However, Apple added haptic feedback to the iPhone keyboard and it is amazing. Now, let me caveat this by saying that Apple has also followed up and said that if you enable haptic feedback, it can impact battery life on your iPhone. So if you have worse battery life after turning this on, you may need to turn it off, but for me, it's completely worth it. All right, to enable haptic feedback on your iPhone, what you're gonna do is open the settings app, then you're gonna go to sound and haptics, and then you're gonna scroll down to keyboard feedback. There are two options here, one is sound and one is haptic. Don't be an animal. Turn off sound. Turn on haptic. Let everyone live in peace without having to hear you click, 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 click on an iPhone keyboard. But with haptic on, you'll be able to feel the quick pulse as you type. And I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it is definitely tapping just ever so slightly as I type. This is a feature that I will leave on forever and ever and ever. And it's hopefully something that comes on default on the iPhone in the future. All right, so this next feature is something I've covered before and it's pretty magical. So I'm gonna cover it again because it is something I've been using quite often. And I've even seen younger kids, specifically my kids, which means they're learning it at school from other kids, use this feature to create their own iMessage stickers which is brilliant and not at all how I saw this feature being used. What I'm specifically talking about is the ability to remove an object from a photo in the background without having to open up Photoshop or know any fancy photo editing skills. So what you'll need to do for this feature is open the Photos app, find a picture that has a good subject in it with a clear background, and then all you have to do is long press on it. And I don't know if you saw that shimmer that showed up on the subject real quick. It's very, very subtle. Once that happens, you can either drag and drop the object to another app, so to Messages, for example, or when you let go, there's a copy or share option. So I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna go to the Messages app, and I can paste it in, and I, I mean, you just saw how quick and easy that was. I, I'm not a Photoshop Pro, it's not perfect. There are some areas where it could use a little bit of an improvement, but like, if we go back, and I wanna take out my dog here. Done, copy, paste. I mean, look at that. That's not too bad, right? Pretty impressive if you ask me. All right, so earlier when I said there were some features I couldn't use on a daily basis until iOS 16 was officially released, this is one of them. And it specifically is the ability to edit messages in iMessage or edit iMessages in Messages. That's the right way. All right, so the reason is, is everybody has to be on iOS 16 in order for this feature to work. It is specific to iMessage, green bubbles, Android people, text message people. Sorry, this just isn't gonna work for you. What you could do now though, once everyone is in iOS 16 is within 15 minutes of sending a message, if you notice an embarrassing typo or a typo in general, which I do all of the time, you can go back and edit that message and fix it. There's also the ability to undo, send, or delete a message you've sent, but you only have two minutes to do that and it'll remove it on both sides of the conversation for you. After two minutes, 
You can edit it, but there is an edit log, so you can't fully delete it without them knowing what it originally said. So in order to use this edit feature in iMessage, what you'll do is send a message. So like right now, this should say, hey, did you know you can edit messages now? But it says, hey, did you bow or bow? You can edit messages now. So what you'll do is long press on it. See a few options here. Undo send would delete it. If I'm gonna tap on edit, slide the cursor up there to the proper word, and then hit the blue check mark. And now the message has been sent and the correction has been made. If you wanna see an edit log, what you do is tap on edits and you can see what the original or further messages were. I think you're limited, I think it's six, you'll have to double check me, but I think you're limited to six edits per message. So you can't edit it a hundred times and keep changing what the message says for screenshots or other not so nice reasons. All right, so the fourth feature on my list is lock screen widgets. This feature is something that, especially with the iPhone 14 Pro lineup and the always on display that I have been using quite a bit. And what this does is it allows you to put little tidbits of information that are constantly visible, again, only on the iPhone 14 Pro lineup, but on the iPhone 14 or other non always on display equipped iPhones. All you have to do is wake your iPhone up you don't even have to unlock it. And you could see that information very glanceable, very easily on the lock screen. So you don't have to jump in the rabbit hole of unlocking your phone to check, hey, maybe the weather and you end up on Twitter for two hours doom scrolling because that's what we do when we unlock our phones. So what you'll need to do to add a lock screen widget is with your phone unlocked, but don't swipe up or click into the home screen, unlocked on the lock screen, long press on it and you'll enter the edit mode for all your various lock screens. And you could have multiple lock screens created here so you could easily switch between them. If you're traveling, have some with TripIt, lock screen on a uh, widget on the home screen or the lock screen and all of that. So what you do is tap on customize after you've entered edit mode. And then you could tap on the areas above and below the clock where you're allowed to have lock screen widgets. So for example, I really like having uh, my next suggested event or my next event listed up with the time and date up top. And then down here in this section, I usually have my activity, weather, that's the current charge level of my car. And then once in a while, when I travel, I throw in TripIt. They just released a lock screen widget, um, which will show me my next uh, gate for my departure flight or what time I need to check into the hotel or what hotel I'm even staying at. And this is parcels uh, letting me know when my next delivery is. Once you're done, you tap done, set as wallpaper pair, and then you're set. So now you have your lock screen widgets there and you could use these with different backgrounds. You could add multiple and they're very, very easy to use and provide plenty of information on the go. All right, so this last iOS 16 feature that I have found myself using more and more is the ability to undo send a message in mail. I think we've all done it where we've promised to attach a file or a document to an email to a colleague or, or someone else and then you hit send and realize I didn't attach that file and then you have to send another email. It just clears up their inbox or you've promised to include something else like text or, or whatever in an email and it just didn't make it in there or maybe you made it an embarrassing typo kind of like I do in iMessage all the time. Well with undo send what you're able to do is Go in, after you've hit send on the message, you have 10 seconds by default to undo sending that message, which really just means that there's a delay built in to your phone actually connecting to the server and sending the message through, so it cancels that, that send request. Uh, and then you're able to either edit it or attach the file. So here, I'll give you a quick rundown of how this works. In the mail app, you tap on, I have this email composed, hit send, and then you'll notice at the bottom here, it says undo send. Again, default is 10 seconds. You tap on it, pulls the email right back up. You can extend this out to 20 or 30 seconds if you want extra time in order to undo sending that message. You do that by going into the settings app, mail, and then scroll all the way to the bottom of the settings app where you'll find the preference to extend it out between 10, 20, or 30 seconds, or turn the feature off altogether if you like living dangerously.
All right, so those five features are things I can't live without and I have been using on a daily basis. Hopefully you learned a thing or two from this and they become features you rely on on a daily basis as well. I'm Jason Cipriani. Thanks for watching this ZDNet video. Make sure to check out more of my work as well as the latest tech news and how-to tips just like this one at ZDNet.com.